Hey guys and girls, thanks for stopping in and checking out this video. Um, it's been a while for me posting, so bear with me. But I gotta say, I'm a little pissed off at myself for not thinking of this process sooner. So it's a fairly simple process and it, it, and it makes a lot of sense. And again, I, I'm not quite sure why I didn't think about doing this, but I'm gonna walk you through it. So anytime you're engraving on acrylic, we're stuck with the fact that we engrave either a painted piece of acrylic and pull the paint away to reveal the white. So basically a negative engrave and the quality on that is, is excellent by the way. Um, but if you want to engrave and get creative with a clear piece of acrylic, you're kind of left with only the white side of the engraving. Um, and, and this is where this new process, uh, new to me, uh, I've never seen it done before, so um, I'm hoping this is something that maybe I even created, um, but it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, and, and everything that I've done with it so far has, has really um, proven to be next level. And um, definitely you can take some of your other projects and make them even better by using this. So what we're doing on clear acrylic is engraving first, um, let me click on the dog here. So say we're creating this little memorial for a customer. Um, click on the dog and we're gonna go to our images. And of course we're using Lightburn. Um, Lightburn's photo processing is far beyond anything out there. Uh, whether you're using scripts or photograv or anything else uh, by far you know a one-stop shop uh, Lightburn does a phenomenal job I've never had an issue creating photorealistic um, engravings with uh, Lightburn so first off the main thing that we're going to do here is we want to engrave all of the blacks we want to engrave everything that would show up as a black. So if we were engraving on a wood piece, um, that's what we're going to be engraving. So we want to do just a regular engrave. And then we also want to throw a little bit more power at it. So we get some depth to this engraving because basically what we're going to do is we're going to fill it. We're going to fill it with some black paint. So I'm bringing it up. I'm using a Thunder Laser 100 watt with a 1.5 inch lens um, you can use your beam buddy or the high resolution um, thunder head um, those are the same um, but you know the the, uh, the smaller the optic the better dpi you're gonna get so as i was saying on our first engrave we're doing a positive image. So make sure your negative image is unchecked. And this is the opposite of what you would normally do if you're engraving clear acrylic. You would be engraving the negative to show all of the white colors, um, you know, white shading. But here we're doing the exact opposite. We're going to do a positive engrave. So make sure that is unchecked. Um, depending on your photo and depending on the capabilities of your machine and your optics, um, you decide where your DPI needs to be. Um, like I said, 100 watt, 1.5 American photonics um, head that I have on mine. And I can get, um, on Jarvis, I can get about 600 DPI with, uh, without a lot of, um, removal of the detail but also keep in mind the higher the power the more area you're removing basically you just think of, of of dropping a atomic bomb versus a sniper um, so be mindful of of your power level and your dpi the the higher the dpi goes probably the, the less 
and power you're going to use because your lines are that much closer together and you're going to be obliterating the detail and you don't want to do that so so basically think of it of it as a sliding scale as as your dpi goes up your power is going to come down a little bit um, so you're not eliminating detail so as you can see um, i'm at 16 power and 450 dpi um, on the next process where i'm going to go down in power i'm also going to go up in dpi so like i said i'm going up in power a little bit on my first engrave because we're going to be filling this with black spray paint or maybe you have some type of color fill that you want to use but this is our first step um, this is going to be a two-part engraving so we would send this over engrave it and then we would basically spray paint wipe down and fill um, and then start all over again with a negative engrave but we'll we'll follow that up in a second okay so here's a few of the items you're gonna need denatured alcohol excellent for cleaning acrylic it's not uh, too harsh and it won't um, make a whole bunch of marks on the acrylic or um, start melting the acrylic really you'll need some type of color fill right here we're using the rust-oleum uh, satin black I prefer the Krylon satin it's a really thin paint and it's very smooth and then of course you're gonna need a piece of acrylic um, we get our acrylic or at least our acrylic clear acrylic local um, look it up in your area or Delvey's plastics um, is one of our options all right so we are engraving our positive so everything that's going to be filled in black we're going to engrave that first So at this point we want to move our laser head out of the way so we can spray paint. We're not taking this piece off of the laser bed. Moving it out of the way and then hitting escape once or twice on at least the Rudia controller will bring your laser head back to your origin point. We're going to spray uh, with our spray paint. Um, put a really really good layer on and then we're going to use a rag to wipe it off and then uh, really try to squish it inside of all of the engraving areas and at this point you're going to see the details emerge of the photo. Once you're done with this process I've been doing it twice just to get that fill in there and dark areas. Uh, it seems to come out better uh, rather than um, being a lighter gray. And take your denatured alcohol and then try to get rid of all of the remnants around the outside um, you could always do this later on but there's a good chance that you will push some of this um, the denatured alcohol and the color into the white engraving that we're about to do so i recommend cleaning it now um, prior to engraving your second uh, negative engraving. So you finished your positive engrave. Now we need to go back into Lightburn. We need to switch it to a negative engrave. And now I'm going to come down on the power a little bit. I'm going to come down to about a 13 uh, for my laser. Again, speeds, powers, and DPI are all relative to your machine. Um, these are things that you need to know. Um, while this will work with a lot of machines, um, it is not the end all be all for settings. So we are going, I'm going to use um, 13 and then I'll bump this up to 600. And this is going to be my negative engrave and I'm gonna go right over the entire photo or engraving that I just completed um, just to reveal the opposite of what I just engraved. 
Uh, quick side note, very important. Make sure you watch the videos on how to do your alignment, your uh, scan offset alignment. Um, if, if your left to right and right to left engraving points aren't matching up, then you'll never have a good engraving. Um, you know, you're, you're trying to fit pieces of a puzzle together, um, but all of the pieces are shifted um, to the side and they'll never line up. So we're laying down thousands and millions of little dots and these dots need to line up. So make sure you go into your, your tools here, the wrench and screwdriver, and make sure your scan offset adjustment is correct and go through the videos that I've, I've done before to make sure that this is accurate. Um, this is going to be for the best engraving possible. Um, also, mirrors are clean, optics are clean, um, and your focus is spot on. Uh, we're trying to get the smallest beam possible onto our material. So again, like I said, I was kind of pissed off that I never really thought about this, but I mean, we're laying down both the positive and the negative um, of the image. So uh, I'm not sure if that really equates to between 800 and 1200 DPI, but obviously you can see from the results, um, it is quite stunning. And, um, you know, the ways that we can use this are, are infinite. I mean, there, there's so many different things that you can put together. Um, here, we'll show you, uh, I'm going to do a side-by-side -side of what a typical engrave would look like. So not only do you have the dark and the lights, um, but you know you don't have to have a specific color backfill. Uh, you can have it straight up against wood and still see everything, which gives a lot more possibilities to what could be done with an engraving like this. You know, and here you can engrave over it on the flip side. You can fill it or you can just leave it alone. Um, here I sanded it down so the lettering actually had a little bit of a frosting to it. But ultimately, you know, being creative with it and doing something like this is going to be what sets you apart from other businesses. There's not many people offering something with this much detail and um, a photorealistic like this unless you're doing sublamination or UV printing. And keep in mind there's always some color fill that you can use on the back side and create a little bit more detail like with a blue highlighter for eyes. So this gives you more options um, and be a little bit more creative with the tools that you already have. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I appreciate you watching. Uh, subscribe, like, and uh, we'll see what we can think of next to uh, change the game a little. Thanks, guys.